Romans chapter 1. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. So we notice right away that Paul is the first word. So Paul is a servant of Jesus Christ, and he's called to be an apostle. Paul is the first name in all of Paul's 13 letters. And he's been separated unto the gospel of God. He's been separated from the 12 to be the one apostle to one body of Christ. And he's going to proclaim the good news of the gospel of God. So what is the gospel of God? Well, let's look further. <clears throat> Notice the parentheses in verse 2, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So, Jesus Christ was promised before by his holy prophets, by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, the gospel of God concerns the his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. So as according to his uh, being a man, he was of the seed of David and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So he was declared to be the Son of God when he rose from the dead. So let's take a look at the gospel of God and see exactly what it is. The gospel of God is justification by faith. No one can come before the Holy Father without the imputed righteousness of Jesus. Jesus Christ. So we need to be justified by faith. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10. So what do we need? We need the righteousness of God. So when we believe the gospel, then <clears throat> our sin is placed on him by God and his righteousness is placed on us. Okay. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So he made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So I, my sin was placed on the, on the cross and his righteousness was imputed to me so the red went to the blue and the blue went to me and then I was placed into the body of Christ with the rest of the people or into this group that is waiting to go to heaven and all of these people have the righteousness of God on, um, imputed to them so, in order to be saved, read Romans chapters 1 through 5 over and over again until you are sure that you're saved. So, let's look at exactly what the gospel is. I declare the gospel by which ye are saved. How that, you know, by crucifixion is how it was. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So here is the gospel in a nutshell. That Christ died on the cross for our sins. He was buried in the tomb and he rose again the third day as was prophesied. So the question is, are you in Adam or in Christ and we're going to find out 
in uh, this chapter and in Romans, uh, chapters 1 through 5, about the three imputations. So, Adam's sin was imputed to man, or, you know, passed to man. And the wrath of God in 118 is against all ungodliness and unrighteousness. First came death and then came the law. Then when someone believes, then man's sin is imputed to Christ, who was the propitiation uh, or fully satisfying sacrifice. So it was, you know, the Son of God paid for our sins with his own blood. And that's in Romans 3, 21 through 26. So then the believers can have Christ's righteousness imputed to man and have be justified by faith and have peace with God, as we'll find in Romans 5, 1. So between Romans 1, 18... And Romans 5, 1, having peace, is this sacrifice of the Son of God in Romans 3, 21 through 26. Inserted, he inserted himself so that we could have his spirit, spirit in us. So, let's take a look at um, being in Adam. Okay. So, all people are born sinners in Adam, and so they're in Satan's kingdom. And the law, the purpose of the law is to, is the knowledge of, of sin, to so show us how sinful we are. It's not something we're meant to keep. But Christ died on the cross, was buried in the tomb, and resurrected. And when we believe that, God looks at my heart and he gives me the spirit of the Son of God. So now I've been translated out of Adam into Christ because I have his spirit in me. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty two. So I um, will have you know, eternal life. And not have to die. So let's take a look at um, the edification process. So the edification process or our cur curriculum or our instructions are in Paul's letters. It begins with the foundation of Romans and then 1st and 2nd Corinthians and Galatians are commentaries on Romans. Then the next level is Ephesians, advanced doctrine. This is foundational doctrine. And Philippians and Colossians are commentaries on Ephesians. Then comes First and Second Thessalonians, which is about the coming of Christ. And then First and Second Timothy, um, Titus and Philemon are pastoral epistles for how to live in that house. So this is our edification or a superstructure that we can have um, a course of study or our instructions in our inner man, in our soul and spirit as we grow spiritually. So let's take a look at the problem was that we were sinners and the solution was we can have justification by faith. So let's take a look at Romans, how it's laid out. So it's, there's four cornerstones. Justification by faith is chapters 1 through 5. He died and rose for us. And this is righteousness received by faith. Then sanctification is Romans 6 through 8 how we can be instruments of righteousness and serve God we died 
and rose with him. So now we can live unto God. Then 9 through 11 is dispensational. Our righteousness opportunity is limited because the fullness of Gentiles is going to come in and we're going to be raptured. So this is about election of two groups, Peter's group and Paul's group, and for service. This is something God chose, and this has nothing to do with our justification. That was already covered in 1 through 5. This has to do with service. God chose two groups to serve him, one in heaven, that's the body of Christ, and one on earth, that's Peter's group or the earthly believers. Then comes the last section, the practical. Chapters 12 through 16, righteousness by a practice of the doctrine. So we're going to find that out. Paul says in Romans 5:12, so we being many are one body in Christ and every one members one of another. Romans 5:12. Paul always writes to the believers in the in believing Gentiles in the body of Christ. But sometimes he mentions Peter's group. Sometimes he identifies himself with Jews and sometimes with the body of Christ. So it's very interesting. We need to be discerning when we read. So the Bible is kind of like two instructions. One to the earthly group, prophecy, and inserted in the middle, sort of, is the instructions to his heavenly group, mystery, Paul, what Paul said. So Romans will answer the question that Job placed in Job 9.2. Um, is written there. How should man be just with God? Romans is about the righteousness of God. Chapter 1, Gentiles under sin. Chapter 2, Jews under sin. Chapter 3, the whole world under sin. Justification is covered in chapter 3, 21 through 31, and imputation in chapter 4. Um, peace with God and reconciliation is in chapter 5. So let's continue reading in Romans chapter 1. By whom we have received grace, so the we here is really Paul, and apostleship, for obedience to the faith. The faith is the instructions given to Paul for the body of Christ among all nations. So this is the instructions for all nations right now to believe for his name, for the name of the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ? So they're called to serve after they have believed. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. So a saint is someone that's set apart for service to God. And then he's going to say grace and peace. Grace to you and peace from God the, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So he greets the, the, all that be in Rome. This is talking to Gentiles. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. So the first thing Paul is going to do is pray. So he thanks God for them. That your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son. So what's the gospel of his Son? Justification by faith. The gospel of God and the gospel of his Son is justification by faith. We, we have, are justified when we believe and receive his spirit. That without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. So he's, you see he's praying. Making requests, if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. So he's, he wants to come to them in Rome. 
For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. So the spiritual gift is more revelation from Jesus Christ that he's been receiving. So in case he doesn't make it to Rome, he's writing it down in this letter to them. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So the mutual faith is the mystery instructions. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto. So he was hindered because he was too busy. That I might have some fruit, that means that they would be doing God's will, which is for all men to be saved and come to knowledge of truth. Helping others to be saved and, and to understand the mystery. Even as among other Gentiles. So you see how he's writing to the Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So he owes the Greeks and the barbarians, the wise and the unwise, to share the gospel of Christ with them. So as much as is in me, as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. So he wants to come and give them further information, but he's going to include it, much of it in this letter. And he's ready, he's ready to go there to give them more good news. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. Okay, so the gospel of Christ has the power to take someone out of Adam and into Christ and save them from eternal damnation if they believe. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. So the Jews first had the opportunity to be saved. And now they're also, also the Greek, the Gentiles have a chance. So the Jews had an opportunity to see the Holy Ghost under Peter's ministry. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So in the good news, justification by faith, is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. God was so holy and so righteous that no one could come before him without the righteousness of Jesus Christ. But he's also righteous to make a way of escape so that we can receive, we who are helpless sinners can receive the imputed righteousness of his son when we believe. It's revealed from the faith, from the faith of the son of God to, to faith, our faith when we believe, because he had the faith to believe that the Father would raise him from the dead. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So we're saved by faith, and we live by faith. Now here comes the bad news. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So the wrath of God is against um, those who do not hold what God has said to them, who God is and what he said um, in truth, but in unrighteousness. It's the wrath of God is against them, unbelievers. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. So people instinctively have knowledge of God and who created him. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Okay, so 
the invisible things are clearly seen from creation. So there's invisible things. Like if we look in a microscope, we can see the details of everything under the microscope. Or if we look in a telescope, we can see how incredible God has designed creation. Being understood by the things that are made. So it's understood by the things that are made, those that God have created, his creatures. Even his eternal power and Godhead. So we instinctively understand his eternal power and Godhead that God exists, so that they are without excuse. No one is, is, can have any excuse, even in darkest, deepest Africa, because all of creation demonstrate his eternal power in Godhead. And also, um, you know, there's a, some in man, we know that God exists from time we're little because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful so he's talking now about the time at the Tower of Babel in Genesis 10 and 11 that when they knew God the Gentiles weren't thankful they didn't glorify him and they weren't thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened so they were foolish to not glorify God or be thankful and so their heart became darkened professing themselves to be wise they became fools it's fools that reject God and his word and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God God can't be corrupted he's perfect into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things so here are some creeping things so when they degraded God and they, then they they're going to also themselves become degraded and perverse as we will see Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. So he, he's going to give them up, as we will see, three times. So he's going to let them do perverse things, you know, adultery and other things. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Okay, so the the lie is going to come out right here. And worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. So creature worship is the lie. We should worship the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. He's, he's you know, almighty God. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections so now he's giving them up to vile affections first uncleanness and now vile affections for even their women did change their natural use into that which is against nature so women's natural use was to have babies but now they're going to not you know do procreate like they were supposed to and uh, likewise, also, men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lusts one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. So, women with women, men with men, same-sex relationship. And they're doing things that which is unseemly, receiving in themselves the recompense of their error. So that kind of lifestyle leads to disease, insanity, and suicide. And so that's 
you know, they get their just desserts. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them up, no, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So what's a reprobate mind? Well, in Jeremiah, it talks about reprobate silver. It's like fool's, you know, silver. It's not the real thing. Or fool's gold. It's not the real thing. And if you had noticed, God is giving them up. Body, soul, and spirit. So here is their, the, repro the, mind, the spirit is in the mind. So now, because they don't like to retain God in their mind, their mind is doesn't have God in it. And they're doing things that are not becoming. Being filled. So they're filling themselves up with all unrighteousness. Like a glass full of water. Dirty water. For any, okay, now Paul is going to make a list. So this is all unrighteousness list. Fornication, which is, you know, uh, sex outside of marriage. Wickedness, you know, doing evil things. Covetousness, wanting other people's things. Maliciousness, being wicked towards other people. Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, you know, arguing, deceit, deceiving. Malignity, well, that's bad news. <laughs> Doing bad, even, you know, full of malice. Whispers, that's like gossips or slanders. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, you know, they're pr proud of themselves instead of proud of what Jesus Christ did. Despiteful, you know, they're, they're, they're spiteful. Boasters, they're boasting about themselves instead of praising God. Inventors of evil things. So they come up with evil ideas. Disobedient to parents. They're supposed to obey their parents, but they're not. Without understanding. So they have no understanding because their, their minds are reprobate. Covenant breakers. Okay. Well, this is talking about the Jews. Because none of the covenants were for the Gentiles. So, although the Jews were descendants from Abraham, they were also sons and daughters of Adam and Eve. Okay. So, God had already given Israel up for a season and scattered them. So, they've become sinners just lost sinners like everybody else they were just as bad as the Gentiles without natural affection oh, that's a sad sad thing to say someone that doesn't even you know want to care about their their spouse or their children implacable that's someone that is refusing to be persuaded by the truth unmerciful you know you know, not having any pity. Who knowing the judgment of God, they know that they're going to be judged by God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, that those who do this list of things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So they, they, they do the same evil things, both the Jews and the Gentiles, and they have pleasure in them that do them. So let's take a look at the timeline. Okay, so in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Then there was chaos um, on earth. And then God restored it and made it nice for Adam and Eve. Then Adam came.
then Noah, and then the Tower of Babel is where the Gentiles were put aside. Then God called out Abraham and made his own nation. Then came Moses. Then David, Daniel. After 400 years of silence came John the Baptist, who introduced Jesus Christ, the Son of God, to the Jews. And after three years of ministry, he died on the cross, was buried, and rose again. Then he was here for 40 days, and then he ascended from the Mount of Olives. Ten days later, he sent down the Holy Ghost and on the little flock of true believers in the upper room and gave a one-year renewed offer of the kingdom to the Jews, which was rejected because of they stoned Stephen. The religious leaders stoned Stephen. And so... Um, Instead of judging and sending the tribulation, God inserted the mystery and postponed or delayed the tribulation. So God appeared on the road to Damascus to Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul. And the dispensation of grace or the mystery was begun. That God had another group of people that he was saving between the appearance of Christ to Paul and the appearance of Christ to rapture us that will live in heaven. The rest of the people on either side will live on earth. So after our rapture, there'll be a period of time, then the tribulation or seven years of um, prophesied by Daniel, the last seven years of the 490 will begin. The seven years of tribulation, also called the wrath of God. Then after those seven years, it's the second coming of Christ to set up his kingdom on earth. Then after his first millennial reign will come the great white throne judgment of all the lost of all time. And hell and death will be cast into the lake of fire. So there's a timeline by the books of the Bible. Genesis to Acts 9 goes all the way to here. That's prophecy. Then mystery is Romans to Philemon, the 13 books by Paul to our instructions for his heavenly group. Then comes Hebrews to Revelation, the books for helping Israel to get through the tribulation and into the kingdom. So you can see that there's an order to the books. So with the fall of Israel, because of the stoning of Stephen, and diminishing of Israel, salvation has now gone to the Gentiles. So the Gentiles that were set aside at the Tower of Babel now have another opportunity to believe. And Paul writes to all that be in Rome, at Rome, be in Rome Romans 1, 7. So in Acts 17, we find something interesting. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. We shouldn't think of the Godhead as idols because we're the offsprings or creatures that have been created by God. And the times of this ignorance God winked at. He didn't expect anything better from the Gentiles. Um, you know, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent or change their minds. So they, the Gentiles could still be saved through blessing Israel by the Abrahamic covenant. But now they have another opportunity to be saved. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men, in that he hath raised him from the dead. Acts seventeen twenty nine through 31 So this is now another opportunity for salvation, as I pointed out for the Gentiles and they have can be assured that you know 
resurrection from the dead is possible because the Son of God was resurrected and therefore he can resurrect us. So Peter and Paul, for the past 2,000 years, Satan's strategy has been mixing Peter and Paul. By one cross, Christ saved two groups to put his spirit in them. So, um, we also, um, you know, Peter's group now, though, Peter's group is on pause. They were put on pause in Acts 15, and God is speaking through Paul today. So, we also find out in Deuteronomy 4.19, God is talking to Israel. Lest thou lift up thine, well, Moses, through Moses, eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them. So all the host of heaven is the fallen angels. And serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Gentiles means nations. So all the Gentiles have been divided among the host of heaven, the fallen angels. So we had been given up to the fallen angels in the second heaven. And God doesn't want Israel to follow suit or do the same thing. So you can find out more about rightly dividing the word of truth, which is what we're doing by reading God's secret, a primer for how to rightly divide the word of truth by Marianne Manley. And this is the key to understanding the Bible. Of course, you want to read the Bible and it's best to read Romans to Philemon. Read Romans until you know you're saved. So we also have a book on on um, Romans, a concise commentary. It's in black and white. And then we have Rightly Dividing Romans Study Guide, which is shorter. It's quicker to get through. But both of them should be read and uh, studied. Then we have a study guide to Paul's letters, which is just, you know, the 13 letters in brief. And this, this is in black and white and it will soon be available in color. The black and white is $4.95 on Amazon and the color is only $3 more, $7.95. And so get the color. It's really amazing. It's so much easier to see. And I use the Schofield Study Bible 3 in the King James Version King, and I recommend that. All our books are available on Amazon. The website is MarianneManley.com. Our YouTube channel, Salvation, Rightly, comma, Rightly Dividing, comma, and The Rapture. Truth Be Told also carries our videos. Please like, share, and subscribe because we're doing Romans chapter 2 next time and you won't want to miss it. Thank you for joining us. God bless.